Let's do one more example of a Shapley-Schubach power distribution calculation. Uh, and this is another one where I would usually, in class, I would give it to you guys and have you work on it. So here's an opportunity. Pause this video right now and try to work on the question from the packet if you want the practice. Or, again, you can always just follow along. But as I've, as you know, as my mantra, it's important to actually do math practice doing it by hand. Test yourself to see if you get it. Um, and, you know, because when, when I'm working on it in the videos or in class, it might make perfect sense. But then when you actually try to do it, there's some things, you know, that come up when we're actually working on it. Um, you know, where anyways, let's check out this example. Uh, and again, pause if you want to try to solve it first. So it says, suppose that Ireland, Cyprus and Malta are members of a committee on the EU. They have been each assigned votes based on their population, seven, four and three, respectively. A simple majority vote passes a motion in this weighted system. List all of the sequential coalitions for these three voters and determine the swing voter. Uh, finally, compute the Shapley-Schubach power index for each. So basically, um, we do exactly what we did in the last video, just basically compute the complete Shapley-Schubach index by listing all the permutations, finding the pivotal player, which is a synonym to swing voter. First step, though, we need to find the quota. We're given four, uh, three players, seven, four, and three. So, it, and it tells us what our quota should be. Basically, a simple, simple majority of the total number of votes. So, what I could do is start by finding what's the total number of votes. V that should be 14, right? Because that would be, yeah, seven plus three is 10, 14. And then a majority, a simple majority, would just be half. So. So majority would be V divided by two, which is seven. And remember, a simple majority is always greater than V over two, which would have to be eight. Because we always round up when it comes to, or we always add one if it is round when it comes to um, simple majority. Uh, and there would be a problem if we did not add one, um, which you would see when you're, um, it, would, it would lead to, um, Anarchy, as we described before. Anyways, uh, so it says list all six sequential coalitions and underline the pivotal player. So in this case, to do the shapley schubach we need to find all of the little bracketed permutations. Again, we can start with the coalition of everybody, but now we need to focus on the order. And we just and we, we don't take subgroups. We just do the full list of each order. So if I start with seven, I could either go seven, four, three, or seven, three, four. That's the only possible ways of starting with seven. When there's only three players, I could do five, seven, three. Wait, there is no five. What am I doing? I'm thinking about the last example again. I can start with four, then go seven, three, or four, three, seven. Um, and I could also go, sorry, let me try to be a little bit neater than this. I could go three, seven, four, or three, four, seven. Uh, and that would be it. So it says there's only six, but basically that would be given by the number n factorial. There's three players, which is three times two. But basically, if you ever want to know how many you're going to have, you can always just do that calculation. Uh, it says find each player's pivotal count and calculate the shapley schubach power distribution. So this is a little easier because there uh, there's only six. Uh, but basically, remember, the rule is add your way left to right till you make it to the quota. So the quota here is eight. Seven plus four is going to make eight. Seven plus three would make eight. Four plus seven does not make eight, so we need the three. three. Four plus three, same. Three plus seven. Wait, what am I saying? Four plus seven does make eight, but four plus three does not getting ahead of myself there three plus seven i need more sleep three plus seven makes eight and three plus four does not but basically find the pivotal player in each case then count them up and find the total so the player one was underlined and there that's the seven was underlined four times player two had four votes was underlined once player three had three votes was underlined once so each count it's 411 is the uh power indices for each player and then the um we would take part over total since there's six total pivotal counts uh player one is four out of six which would be two-thirds player two 
was one out of the six total, and player three was also one out of the six. And so, again, reduce the fractions and convert to percentages, um, but that would leave us with two-thirds, which is approximately 66.7%, and one-sixth is 16.7%. So, again, you could just divide those through, move the decimal twice to get their percentage, uh, or when in the case of the online homework, usually... It just wants the fraction anyways. But anyways, uh, a couple things to check yourself after you're done is what you want to make sure is that all of the percentages actually add up to 100% because that's kind of what we're, that's the whole point here is we want to know what, how much power does each player have as a percentage of the total. Um, and well, it might not round, it might not add up to 100 exactly due to my rounding, uh, but really if you add up all the fractions, it should add up to exactly one, which is equal to 100%. Um, but also what you can do is check to make sure that the sum of all of your shapley shubik uh, pivotal counts is equal to n factorial, and, you know, just make sure that you're only doing one in each case. Um, but that will, that's another example of the shapley shubik power distribution. Um, in the next video, we'll look at chapter two, section four, which gets into a little bit more of the scale of how many sorts of coalitions we're going to have, depending on whether we're using Bonzoff or Shapley-Schubick.